Hey everyone, thanks for joining Harry and I on Hiking for Days. We're traveling westward on the Trans-Canada Trail, and today it's the vast winding waters of Ontario that call to us, not the usual trails. But before we dive into today's episode, thank you so much to all our subscribers for your continued support, especially staying during my absence. And if you're new here, welcome. If you enjoy relaxing, hiking, cycling, or slow travel videos, you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe and like button to help our channel grow. This summer, we drove along the Trans-Canada Highway to go cycling in Saskatchewan, a prairie province in Canada. On the way, we passed through southwestern Ontario and we noticed a series of intermittent trails marked on our map as part of the Trans-Canada Trail. I was curious why these trails weren't connected. It turns out, the Trans-Canada Trail veers off solid ground and onto waterways, becoming a 2,000 km paddling route through southwestern Ontario. Heading east to west, the water trail begins at the junction of the St. Mary's River and Lake Superior, near the city of Sault Ste. Marie. Paddlers travel along the north shore of Lake Superior, then navigate a labyrinth of lakes and rivers into Manitoba. In this region, the trail is on the water, with the land-based sections serving as spots where paddlers can pull up in their canoes or kayaks to camp, restock supplies, or simply stretch their legs and explore on foot or by bike. Harry and I decided to stop at several of these small segments of the trail to get out of the car, have a picnic by the water, and do a bit of reconnaissance for our future paddle along the trail. In the next couple of episodes, we'll be sharing the fascinating sights we discovered along these land trails on our journey to Saskatchewan. This brings us to the village of Vermilion Bay, one of three towns along the paddling trail that's close to the highway we traveled on on our way to Saskatchewan. Here we cycled and hiked the full pathway as shown on the map. The pine tree pathways start right from the boat ramp at Vermilion Bay. Travelers can stretch their legs, follow the gentle trail around the small town, and restock on supplies. While there were several motorboats around, we didn't actually see anyone paddling during our visit. The name Vermilion, meaning a vivid red-orange color, may once have described the sand, the rocks, or perhaps the fiery autumn leaves of years gone by. Today, however, as we walk the trail, it's the deep greens and earthy browns that dominate the landscape. The 2.5 kilometer path around the town was enjoyable, though not exactly as shown on the map. Starting from the dock, the Canadian trail signs were a bit off. Harry followed the woodland trail, which isn't on the map, while I cycled the neighborhood roads to check if the trail connects through. The map shows the two ends not quite meeting, but Harry found me within 10 minutes near a school and community center. He mentioned that the Woodland Trail had a few obstacles, making it unsuitable for road bikes. The next leg of the trail crosses the highway, where you'll find places to get supplies, eat in a restaurant, or stay at a motel or campground. Across the highway, the 7.5 km stretch becomes an ATV path, with a strip of mowed grass beside the road. We had our fold-up bikes, but struggled with the shifting sands, so we ended up riding on the pavement. The trail officially ends near Blue Lake Provincial Campground, just past where it's marked on the map. It's worth continuing a minute further to reach the entrance. Note that there is a small fee to enter the park. The water here is impossibly clear, the beaches are long and sandy, and the park offers a range of family-friendly activities. 
an ideal spot to pause and enjoy the surroundings. And here the pine tree pathways come to an end. Until next time, friends, I wish you safe and happy adventures.